This lesson is going to examine the empirical rule. This helps us understand something about the behavior of the standard deviation and what it represents. So one of our fundamental questions is what does the standard deviation mean? If you are told that the mean of a set of data is 100 and the standard deviation is 10, what does that really tell you? Well, we know that the standard deviation represents the amount of spread in a data set. So in this case, we recognize that the spread is 10, the mean is 100. We know that it would be less spread out than a data set with a standard deviation of 20 and more spread out than a data set with a standard deviation of 5. But exactly what does it mean? Is there something else that we can tell about the data set with respect to the mean and the standard deviation? Well, our first case that we're going to look at here with the empirical rule requires that the data set be normally distributed. When we say normally distributed, we mean that it follows a bell-shaped distribution. So what we're looking at here is essentially a bell-shaped curve. And we're going to have to have that type of a situation if we're going to apply the, if we're going to apply the empirical rule. So what does the empirical rule tell us? It says 68% of the data should be within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the data within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the data should be within three standard deviations of the mean. So here's a visual representation of that. The mean is in the middle for a normal distribution. The mean, median, and mode are all the same. 68% of the data would be with one standard deviation of the mean, 95% within two, 99.7% of the data would be within three standard deviations of the mean. So here's an example. We're told that the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 10. So what does that tell us? In particular, how does the empirical rule help us? Well, the only way we can use the empirical rule is if we know that the underlying data set is normally distributed. That is, it is bell-shaped. And if that's the case, we expect about 68% of the data to be within one standard deviation of the mean. When we say expect about, if you flip a coin 10 times, you expect five heads, but you're not always going to get five heads. So keep that in mind as we look at this concept. The mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 10, so we expect about 68% of the data to be within one standard deviation of the mean. The mean is 100, standard deviation is 10, 100 minus 10, 100 plus 10. You would expect 68% of the data to be between 90 and 110. Similarly, for two standard deviations, we're told that we expect about 95% of the data to be within two standard deviations of the mean. Again, our mean is 100 and our standard deviation is 10. So two standard deviations is 20. 20 on either side would be 100 minus 20, 80, 100 plus 20, 120. So we would expect 95% of the data to be between 80 and 120, which is what we have there. And for three standard deviations, we expect 99.7% of the data to be within three standard deviations of the mean. So a standard deviation is 10, 3 times 10 is 30, 100 minus 30, 70. 100 plus 30, 130. So we expect about 99.7% of the data to be between 70 and 130. Now let's take a look at Minitab. I'm going to erase previous cells that were there. And I'm going to generate a new data set. I'm going to say random 10,000 C1, semicolon normal, and uh, let's give it a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5. So what this does is this generates 10,000 numbers from a population that is normally distributed, mu equals 50, sigma equals 5. 50 and 5 are parameters, and we're going to get some values in our data set. And I want to see how many of them lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So let's just kind of give ourselves some information here. So what do we know? The population is normal, and we'll look at a picture of that in a minute, with mu equals 50 and sigma equals 5. Those are parameters. So if we want to go within one standard deviation, we would have to go 50 minus 5, 45, to 50 plus 5, 55. So what portion? of the data is between 45 and 55.
That's one of the questions we want to ask. Before I do that, let's make sure we see that this is normally distributed. So my command is going to be to draw a histogram for C1. And what do I get? Very much looking bell-shaped. So we feel good about our description here. But we define it as normal, so that shouldn't surprise us too much. I can put my data set in order, sort C1, C2. And now I want to see how many are between 45 and 55. So I'm going to use my scroll bar. I'm going to find out what portion of my numbers are between 45 and 55. You still have a ways to go yet. And it's somewhat tedious to find that, but we'll get there. So my first number above 45 is, is this really 45? It is not. So 1611. Number 1611 is first. So I'm going to just write there, write it up there so I keep that in mind. More than 45. And then how about the last one? Um, less than 55. So if we find that, what do we get? Ways to go here. Uh, that would be number 8427. So number 1611 to number 8427, how many do I have? Well, that's a total of 6817 out of 10,000 are between those. So what is that? That's, again, about 68%. So that's fairly close to what we expected. Now, if we go within two standard deviations, what will we need? Remember, the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 5. So if we want two standard deviations, we're going to ask what portion of the data is between 50 minus 10, which would be 40, and 50 plus 10, which is 50. So again, I'm going to go ahead and look at my list and see if I can count how many are more than 40 and less than 50. See what we get. 39. The first number, more than 40, is number 245. Write that down. And uh, the last number under 50 is 50. What will that be? Uh, not between, excuse me, not between 40 and 50. Uh, 5 times 2 is 10. We want to go between 40 and 60. That would be two standard deviations. So what's the last one under 60? And that is 97.75. And that gives us 95.31. Out of 10,000, which is approximately 95%. And for three standard deviations, we're going to need to go from 50 minus 15 to 50 plus 15. 50 minus 15 is 35. 50 plus 15 is 65. And let's see, first one below 35. First one above 35, excuse me is number 23. So we'll put 23 here. And last one uh, below 65 is number 99.87. Number which is 9,965 total out of 10,000, which is about 99.65%, pretty close to 99.7%. So we've seen if we have a normally distributed data set, we expect about 68% of the data within one standard deviation, 95 within two, 99.7 within three.